This video is about making some, uh, I guess they call them whirly gigs from my garden. Uh, I decided to make them kind of in the shape of a uh, bumblebee. And so I just drew up a, um, just a very simple bumblebee shape. And then I took and I programmed that and I loaded it in my CNC router. And I started cutting out the, um, the bodies for the whirly gigs. Um, you see, it's really just a, a super simple shape that looks kind of like a bee. That's just trying to keep it simple and um, use some of the material that I had laying around. So I just used some half-inch plywood for this uh, project. Um, I don't think the plywood is a, a really super weather-resistant plywood, but I put enough coats of paint on it and everything that it should stand up over time. So um, I decided to... Uh, make eight of them at the same time to make one for the top of each fence post in my garden so that's why there's so many of them that i'm cutting out um so here you can see i've got the um the plywood shapes all cut out and um the next thing i did is i kind of drilled some holes in the bottom because i'm going to put them on a stand and i just made some temporary stands so i could just start painting them all up and um i would be able to paint all surfaces at once I had some uh, exterior sun yellow rust-oleum paint. That's a water-based paint laying around. So I put a couple coats of that on them first. And then I went back and I just took like a plastic circle guide and I um, laid out some stripes on them where I was going to do the, um, the black stripes. And then I took and I put some masking tape on that and I cut on the lines. And they're all different. I just kind of did them by hand. But here's the um, final results of the first one. And I was pretty pleased with it. So I went ahead and I taped up all the rest of them next. And um, then I just took a can of black spray paint and I sprayed them all black and then peeled the tape off. And I was left with some bees. And I wanted to put a couple of antennas on them, and um, I just took some old breezing rod that I had laying around, cut some pieces uh, to the length I wanted, and I just hand eyeballed and hand drilled on kind of two angles, a um, couple of holes to put these pieces of uh, breezing rod in. And uh, they should be fairly weatherproof because they're just pieces of brass. So um, here's the first one kind of showing you how I... Um, just drilled the holes and I tapped the brazing rod in and then I went back and a, um, took a pair of pliers and just kind of gave them a little angle on it so it looked kind of gave it a little bit more shape it looked a little bit more like a bee's head and then once I got them shaped up I went back and I took some super glue and I um, super glued them in place and there they are all eight of them now have their little antennae on them I guess you'd call it Next, I needed the uh, cross shafts for the um, wings to spin in. So I had some pieces of uh, half-inch OD stainless steel tubing that was 3 8 ID. And I went out in my shop and I just cut uh, eight pieces of that to length so that I could uh, put one piece in through each B to uh, give me a good pivot point for... Um, for these things to uh, spin on that we should last a really long time so first thing you do is just cut them all the length and just have to take them on a, a little belt sander and go back and just clean all the burrs up and whatnot that um, that happened when you were cutting them and um, then after that I took them down and I um, put them in my lathe because I wanted a section in the center of them that would hold on to the super glue so that they would uh, really glue in good and tight. So I decided to take, uh, take a knurling tool and just put a uh, simple knurl in the middle of them that would actually give the super glue something good to grip onto so uh, they should stay in over time and uh, the glue won't break loose from the stainless steel shaft. So I just... Um, you can see I just threw them in the lathe quick with a knurling tool and hit them quickly and I wound up with a nice little knurl center on each one of them and I'm hoping that will help them stay together longer. Yeah, I 
used the, the stainless steel shafting or tubing because that was what I had laying around. But you could really make them out of wood or anything else if you wanted to. Then I just went back in my shop and I uh, took some fine buffing compound and I just decided to clean them up, polish them up a little bit because they were pretty nasty looking from uh, laying around my shop the first many years. Uh, then uh, back to the drill press and I drilled the um, holes for, opened up the holes. I had cut small holes with the uh, CNC router and now I went back and I opened them up so that they were a perfect fit with the uh, shafts. Then it's just a matter of um, pushing the shaft in through the hole up to the, uh, I kind of pushed them up to the narrow spot there. And I got them all in there. Then I went back and I took and I put a drop of uh, super glue around the narrow section. And then I just pushed them in place so that they would be uh, centered in the B. And um, everything seemed to hold really good with the glue when it was dry. And then I needed some uh, wings for the knees to um, spin around in the wind. So I had some 18-gauge uh, sheet metal left laying leftovers from another job, and I went out and I just kind of drew up a uh, what I thought would make a good wing, and then I had to go back and I had to cut 16 of them out to um, make two wings for each of the uh, the whirly gigs. Uh, it's a pretty simple job. It's just a matter of watching the machine go again and. Um, they all come out pretty good in the end. Now on this cut you'll see uh, why I need a breakaway switch and a breakaway mount for my torch because I had the, um, the cut lined up with an old hole in the piece and the torch you can see there the torch actually dives when it goes out into air and um, luckily I had the breakaway switch and the breakaway on it so nothing happened you just snap it back together. Uh, then I just took them over and I took a little four and a half inch grinder with a um, a flop wheel on it and went back and just used that to uh, clean them up and deburr all the edges on them. And after cleaning them up, then it's over to my little bending brake and I um, put some lines on there so I can line them up with it. And I just wanted to give them a um, like a 45 degree bend for uh, to be able to catch the wind with. Now, I originally was going to um, use these metals and then put a piece of clear plexiglass that's a little bit larger on it, but I don't know if I'll need that now, so I'm going to wait and find out. All right, with everything bent up, then uh, with everything I do, I just go over and I've got a glass bead cabinet, and I just go over everything quick to get all the, um, the burn marks in the scale that's on the uh, metal and whatnot just to make it easier for welding and painting in the long run. Then uh, I had to make some bushings also to go in my uh, my my hollow tubing there for the shaft to ride on. So I had a couple pieces of the little nylon around and I just went on the lathe and I had to turn down 16 bushings out of uh, some nylon stock. And I get a, a lot of high winds where I live so I just wanted to make sure that I had some little replacement bu replaceable bushings to be able to use in case they do wear out then they were kind of a press fit in the uh, shafting when I turned them so all they did is I just used my woodworking bench vise to uh, press the nylon bushings in and here you can see the eight B bodies uh, basically all ready to go now so now it's on to going back and uh, finishing up the wings so for the one wing I wanted to make removable, I needed some collars to uh, weld onto it so that I could just um, put a set screw in and loosen it and remove it. So I had some three quarter inch drill rod laying around and I just had to go back and I cut off eight uh, about half inch long pieces that uh, I turned into these collars. It takes a couple of minutes to cut all eight of them. And then it's just a matter of going back over and uh, throwing them in the lathe and putting a quarter inch hole in them. It's a little bit oversized of a quarter inch for the for them to slip over the shaft in my old 1950s South Bend lathe. And then throw them in the uh, bridge port and cross drill a hole in them that will be tapped for the, um, the set screw that's going to hold everything on the shaft. 
So it's just a matter of um, just drilling a hole in all of them. And then just going back and tapping it out with a 832 um, tap for the set screw. And like I said, the um, the only reason I had to make these collars and put the set screws in them and whatnot is because I want to be able to take the whole thing apart later real easily. Uh, there's the eight collars that you can see there. Then it's a matter of just taking and setting up in a V-block and uh, holding the parts together and then taking and tack welding the um, first there's a uh, five inch shaft that goes on there. It's welded to one side of the um, the wings or propellers or whatever you want to call it. Then I go back to the other side and this uh, little collar that I made gets tacked onto the other eight sets of wings. So now I have um, eight completed sets of, um, of uh, wings for them, I guess you could call it. And then it's just a matter of um, sandblasting them again to clean them up, a little bit of grinding, and then just I put a coat of, quick coat of black paint on everything. And next, I needed a couple of uh, washers, plastic washers to put in. So I have this uh, gasket cutting set that I got about 100 years ago, I think. And um, that works really good with some, uh, I buy some of the sheets of like the UHMW, the thin sheets. And then I just use it to punch my own washers with. I start with the uh, bigger, bigger outer diameter, and then I go back with the um, smaller punch and use that center prick from the first one. And... Um, get a whole bunch of washers in a short period of time. Basically, they cost nothing. Then I needed to make some stands to hold everything up, and I had some, uh, some four or four and a half inch diameter, 12 gauge planks I had cut out of a project laying around, so I decided to put them to use. And um, it's just a matter, I uh, just flipped the chuck, chuck jaws on the lathe, and throw them in there and then I um, just had to drill a, a quarter inch center hold hole in each of them so that I could go back and I could weld the uh, mounting shaft into it. So I just had a, uh, another piece of quarter inch shaft laying around and I had to cut that up into I think it was about five inch pieces, eight five inch pieces to um, get some mounting shafts because each of these whirly rigs is eventually going to be mounted on top of a fence post by my garden. So then it was just a matter of uh, welding them together and grinding the weld flush on the bottom. And I had a nice little stand that probably I'll put some screw holes in it later to mount to the fence post. But for now, I left them like that. And then a quick coat of um, an automotive quality primer on them. And then a quick coat of a John Deere green paint. And with the stands done, I decided to go back and uh, take the bees and just sew a um, last coat of clear Rust-Oleum sealer on them just to be safe, to make sure everything is really sealed good and make sure all the joints where the um, shafts go through and the antennas go in and whatnot, I'll have a real good seal around them. So I just uh, sprayed on a quick final coat of that Rust-Oleum and that stuff is really good and wears good outdoors so it should protect the finish, keep them looking nice. So there you can see one that's been assembled um, up here, just starting to uh, do the assembly on them all. And um, basically, it's a matter of I take the first uh, propeller shaft, I put a little one of the washers on that I made, then I give it a quick coat of a um, liquid graphite spray that I have that basically dries instantly, and it's really long-lasting lubricant that works good. And here I'm starting to put it together in the wrong order. I forgot to put graphite on the other side. So I got to pull that out and just give it a quick shot in there to just give it a little bit of extra lubricant. And then um, the other washer goes on there. And then the, the, um, the other wing that has the set screw on it to hold it all together goes on last. And then it's just a matter of uh, tightening up the set screw and basically it's all done and um, just ready to be put on the stand and put out by the uh, garden and this is just another one of those uh, fun little projects that I made I mean I thought I'd share the idea 
Um, it could be made with wood or it could be made with other things. And, um, and just the idea of how I made everything work, I figured uh, may be good for somebody else that's looking into making something like that. So here we have the um, eight finished whirly gigs, and uh, all they have to do is take them out to the garden. And now, um, next time you see them, they'll be mounted. Each one will be mounted on top of a fence post. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.